we're the NC Beer Guys, and welcome to another episode of the NC Beer Buzz. We found ourselves a long way from home today. We made the trek up the mountain. We're in the great metropolis of Silva, North Carolina, continuing our tour of the far western North Carolina breweries. We want to make sure people know there's beer outside of Asheville when you come to western North Carolina. So we're hitting up any number of breweries in the next couple of days. We're going to bring you the videos of where we are and what we're doing in the happening beer scenes outside of Asheville, which is a great place, but there's other options for great craft beer other than Asheville. We found ourselves, as I said, today in Silva, and we're at the Sneaky Squirrel, as they say, tap room and brewery. brewery. So you can eat and drink here. They want no labels. This is Jesse, this is Duncan, that's what we're gonna do. This guy knows the beer and makes the beer, and this guy knows the front end of the kitchen. That's good enough for that introduction? Works for us. Sounds yeah. great. How did we become Sneaky Squirrel about a year ago? Seemed like a good idea at the time. Why? <laughs> we'll say that. Why? I've been asking myself that. Were you a home brewer? Yes, absolutely. We got our start here in 2001. I opened a homebrew supply shop here in town called Dingleberries. Okay. We figured we call it Dingleberries because it's a great place to hang out. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. T-shirts pending. That's right. And uh, we'd been doing that for a while. I'd always wanted to make the jump to commercial brewing. There's you know, a monetary issue here and there. Startup costs. <laughs> yeah, right. People just don't give away stainless steel They just don't steel hand anymore. out money. Yeah, for seriously. Just they don't for give you copper, right? That's right, right. So anyway, a couple years back, the uh, government decided they were going to send me over to the Sinai. And I spent a year sitting in between Egypt and Israel and asking people nicely not to shoot at each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, that had a, had a little capital when I came back mm -hmm. and used that to launch this. Great. So there we go. That's great. And how did you bring this guy in? Why does he do the food side? Did you, um, do you know I, food too? Or just beer? I can recognize food when it's on a plate. But you don't let him in the kitchen much? No. no, okay. no. I don't actually live in the kitchen either. Um, I was originally a restaurant manager in Charlotte okay. a while back. So you know the business side. I know the, I know the front end restaurants. I know servers. Uh, I know bartenders. Okay. I know that kind of stuff. I know opening a restaurant. I know shutting down a restaurant. I know that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. We've been together as partners in various sundry other little businesses. Um, I teach at his karate school in town. Okay. So it was kind of our A next natural thing. evolution of your yeah. relationship just to bring him along. Yep. So is there a style of beer? Do we come to know as a sneaky squirrel beer? Do you brew across all styles or you got a personal preference? Well, my personal preference when I brew for me. Well, brewing for you and brewing for the market. <laughs> yeah, is, there's is, two is, different that's things. Right, that's when right. I brew for me, um, well, it's hoppy. Okay. If I if I pop one of my home beer home brews and people on either side of me don't go, mm, From, you know, it's hop not bar. hoppy enough. Okay. I'll knock flies out of this guy. Right. But but of course the whole marketplace <laughs> yeah. is not uh, full of hop heads. No, no. What so we do? You brew some IPAs, obviously. We do a couple different IPAs. We have uh, five different rotating IPAs. We usually try to keep two of them on tap. I'm down to Five one right of now. how many? What are you trying to usually have to serve, numbers-wise? Okay. Fourteen of ours and one cider. Okay. We, we try to keep, um, like, ten constant and then three or four rotating in. One-offs or rotating seasonals, whatever it happens to be. We've got a concept we call Beer of the Week, and what we do with that is that it's pure experimental brewing. Okay. And we have done some weird, weird stuff. You know, we've, And some we've, of it hit and some of it didn't, I guess. Not every experiment works. Exactly right. And I'm okay with that. So that's sure. why our, our numbers go up and down as to what we keep in. And uh, what I the best description I ever heard for it is if I could go back into, say, 1700s and pull out a classic English brewmaster and drop him in a room with modern equipment and modern ingredients, what would he make? Mm hmm and that's what I shoot for. I don't want to trace the extremes on either end. I want a core of good, solid, traditional in some traditional senses, beers. but done well and with the eye to quality, of course. Absolutely. Good. good. And then we've got our experimental beers. Mm -hmm. Our currently our most successful selling beer started out as beer of the week. It was a Halloween beer. We called it Clockwork Zombie. Is it pumpkin something or nope. Halloween? It was. Cherry pomegranate wheat. Cherry pomegranate wheat. And we were originally looking to make it blood red. We were going to do something with blood orange uh -huh, to, yeah. you know, for Halloween. Sure. But what we came out with is gray, frothy mess. I mean, <laughs> it looked 
horrible. Does it still look horrible? No. Oh, it looks better than, but not great. No, 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 no. <laughs> we wanted it horrible. Okay. It was then, Halloween. It was Halloween. Right. We said it's zombie juice. So you stick a zombie in a vice. Yeah, that's right. Come right. Out. Squeeze it. Right. And we couldn't keep it in stock. <laughs> we had Great people, problem to have. Had people drinking it like this. I can't look at it. Yeah, I love right, it. Right. So we reformulated it. And now it's this glorious cherry red color. And nice. So, so that's but it what, started as a, an experiment and yeah, a one-off. Absolutely. And you never know what's going to hit. Don't. The uh, beer we've got coming up for our anniversary party on the 20th was uh, Tropicat. We built that because we were having a Caribbean-style party. Mm -hmm. And we built that beer. And it just disappeared. <laughs> it just boom. Right. And we've had people coming back in here demanding. We, we might again, better so. do this one again. There you go. That Good. that may end up as a permanent tap if it keeps selling. Now you know the beer side you don't do all the brewing yourself. You've got a brewer I've got or a brewer assistant, assistant, brewer, yes. assistant brewer. He he does most of the brewing at this stage. Okay. Unfortunately I do more of the government paperwork than the brewing but Okay. But yeah, these most of these are original recipes that I built in the last fifteen years mm -hmm. home brewing. And then just teach him how to do. Good, good. So, did you think about doing it without the food? Ever think about just doing a brewery and a, and a small tap tasting, or did you always think you're going to know you're going to do food? We started out with the concept of a brewery, and started looking at what was available. We locked onto this space, and we saw the size of this space, and we saw the potential we had in it. And none of the other breweries at the time, nobody in, in actually Waynesville had one brewery that had a restaurant. Nobody else did. Okay. So it was a, it was a niche you could feel. Yeah, that's what we were looking for. Now you know everybody has three and four food trucks stapled to the side of the right. Building, but still, but that's different than having your own in house. It that is you control, absolutely. That you control. And we can pair the beer with the food, which we do. Good. So we, now, do you cook with the beer, or just do, you cook with the beer? Everything and everything that goes out of our kitchen has something to do with the beer, just about. Great. So all the burgers are beer braised, the pork belly is beer braised. It's roasted in the beer. It's you know the chicken is cooked in the beer. Everything is cooked in the beer. Now so. that sounds a little of scale for pub food. It is. Okay. Let's talk about the menu. What do you um, expect when it comes to eat? What we really wanted to do was we wanted to do like simple bar foods. We wanted to do them well. Okay. We wanted to do them in fairly large portions so they can be shareable. So. Every time I bring out a plate of nachos with somebody new in the bar, I get a, oh my God, that's the biggest plate of nachos I've ever seen. The right. nachos that's are all for me. Right, right. Uh -huh. you know? um, I do, um, we also specialize in game meat. We found nobody around was doing bison or elk. So I've got an elk burger or an elk something on special almost all the time. Mm -hmm. We do venison, we do alligator sometimes, depending on what we can get from our food supplier sure. at the time. Um, and we just we try and do it well. We try and do it. We make everything in house. When the the health inspector came by and said, "I want to see your can opener," my kitchen guy said, "I don't have a can opener." Like, what do you mean I don't have a can opener? He looks at him and said, "Find a can." Yeah. And right. they went. Yeah, it's okay. all fresh, local if you can get local, but yep. fresh. Local, fresh, as fresh as we can get it, as local as we can get it, and we make it all. We make all our sauces in house. We make you know we, our hot wing sauce is our own hot wing sauce. Our, we make an ale-based aioli sauce out of our beer. Uh, we make, uh, right now I've got a special with a sweet pepper, uh, sriracha, honey sauce thing that one mm -hmm. of my cooks. It's amazing. And, you know, everything has beer in it. It's now, you talk about food and beer pairings. Do you recommend to people who say... It's actually on my menu. Okay, great. Okay, well, I was getting there because we see some places that do great things with menus by going ahead and recommending. Mm -hmm. You can drink whatever you want, but we recommend this yep. will be the best pairing. Yep. Dave's so into food and beer pairings. I absolutely, yeah. My menu is all paired with beer and food. So everything gets its own little pairing, and it all comes out really well. So. Oh, that's great. That's great. We'll actually have been known to create beer to go with somebody's good idea of food. So mm -hmm. it's like we've, we're doing it backwards on the 20th is we've got our, our tropical that beer. That you knew you wanted to do for the anniversary. Yes. Right. So now we're making wings to match it. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a wing beer pairing. That so. you wouldn't necessarily have had unless you had the beer to match. Correct. And, then, right. and it sometimes works the other way. You right. come up with a food item, a menu item, mm -hmm. and you do a beer to match it. Yep. Right. So it works both ways. So um, for our viewers who don't know Silva, and maybe do know Silva but don't know you guys, what used to be here and where are you in relation to, I, we know, you, you're not right in downtown. You're out, what is this highway? 
it's Main Street. Our address is 1315 West Main Street. But we from are downtown. Less than a mile from downtown. You come by the, the courthouse up on the hill, the big courthouse up Jackson County. And we are right County. on your left-hand side. We're an old uh, Pontiac GMC dealership. Okay. And we've refitted it into a restaurant and brewery. Now, coming in the front, it, I was, it was obvious you have live music. We have Is live that music something you do like all the time? Or every Saturday. Every Saturday. Saturday. Right now we're scheduled up through the middle of October. And you do that or through, or is it bluegrass, variety of music, or bringing all kinds all of kinds people? Of stuff. Okay. All kinds of stuff. Um, the other thing we do on Friday nights, we're turning it into a uh, dance night. We've got uh, twice a month we've got contra dancing, and as school starts, we'll probably be able to pick up a swing dancer or, or ballroom or something else like mm -hmm. that. One of our big focuses here is to be an activities place. A gathering place for the community, for one, but not only just to come drink and eat. No, right. it's always something to do. From you know, we've got the only regulation uh, billiards nine table foot. in okay. uh, yeah nine foot billiards table right. in the county. Mm -hmm. I understand. We've got a couple of ping pong tables. We're looking at starting ping pong league, darts, cornhole, foosball. Just we're always rotating what we're doing. We'll bring out classic video games. We've got like how many different. Video consoles. I've got six, I think, different video game consoles, mm -hmm. all various sundry ages old. Right. Um, just you know, when we've got the demand. Right now, we used to do it on Sundays, but right now my Sundays have been so busy, I need the room, the dining room for mm -hmm. it. It's right. a great problem to have. Yeah, sure. So uh, that's always been a good thing. We got board. We got all kinds of strange board games. Um, we keep around for people to be play and use. So that's that's good. So stuff. so you you got you're from the community. You've been here twenty years, right? So you know the community, mm -hmm. but you're also trying to be a part of the community and give back to the community. Mm -hmm. That's that's, so, that's, that's so definitely what we're we're aiming for. Uh, primarily locals. I mean, we love our tourists. Of God course, bless them. They keep this town alive. But they're not here year round, and, and it's hard to count on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the the same thing with the college. We love our college students, and I, I teach at the college. I've been teaching at the college now for well nineteen years. Right. At but, Western Carolina? Yes. Okay, right. But um, we're trying to be a place where neighbors can come and sit and talk to neighbors. We're getting constantly beat to death because we don't have football games on the TV. We don't play sports. But that's not who you are. No, we, we don't have TVs at all. We want people to talk to one yeah. another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ancient art of communication, which... Gosh. Which some people have forgotten, frankly, <laughs> but still... We're bringing it back one Trivial Pursuit box at a time. That's right. You will interact <laughs> while you drink and eat and enjoy interact. yourself. Do it, do we it. We will make you enjoy yourself. <laughs> there you go. We wish you guys all the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having us in. And we'll remind our viewers when you get to Silva, especially when you get first when you get to Asheville, come outside of Asheville. Drink some beer somewhere else besides Asheville. But when you come to Silva, make sure you check out the Sneaky Squirrel just behind the courthouse down on Main Street and tell them we sent you. Until next time, this is Dave and Glenn reminding you to drink local and keep your beer dollars in North Carolina.